started. <laughs> there we go. All right. Happy Sorry. rainy spring break. I'd like to call the order of the Salem Kaiser Area Transportation Study for Tuesday, March 28th, 2023. And we will do call. Make sure everybody is here. So I'll start and then we'll go around. So Kathy Clark, uh, Mayor of Kaiser. Kevin Cameron, Marion County. Wild wow. Morehurst, Hope County. Anna Henson, ODOT. Julie, do you? Julie Warnke, City of Salem Public Works. Connie Radke, Marion County Public Works. Dan Fricky, ODOT Region 2. Brandon Blunt, ODOT. I'm sorry, Teresa Wisenheim, I'm here with COG. She's our newest employee. Just started uh, Thursday. 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 Director. <laughs> Aaron Odenthal, ghost. Lou <laughs> 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 Jackson, Scott Spell. Steve Dobrinich, Liner, Scouts. All right. And then on the screen, uh, Steve. Steve Harding Turner. Maria. Maria Nocos Pressey, Salem Kaiser School Board. Sadie. Sadie Carney, uh, Chariots Board of Directors. Kim. Kim Sapinar, SCAT staff. And then uh, Sarah. Uh, Sarah Duncan, Chariots Board of Directors, alternate. And then Mark. Mark Bernard, ODOT, Principal Planner for Region 2. And L.M. Lori, which I'm going to assume is? Lori. Lori Moore. That's me. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you all. Uh, the first order of business is the approval of the minutes from February 28th, 2023. Were there any additions or corrections noted? Um, the addition that I had has gotten made on this draft that we have here, yep. Madam Chair. So uh, I will um, move to approve the minutes. Okay. Moved by Kevin Cameron, seconded by Anna Henson for approval as presented in the packet. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Signify by saying no. Hearing no objection, motion passes unanimously. By the right and talk at the same time, which is never a good idea. Public comment this time is provided for any member of the public to um, address the policy committee. Is there anyone from the public who would like, oh, and just for the record, uh, Councillor Phillips has joined us from City of Salem. So welcome. All right. Keep going pass it down. I don't see any members of the public present. So we will move then to item D as in delightful for the amendments to the SCAP fiscal year 21 22. Yeah. Steve, you're up. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah. Maybe full screen this too. Start, start the present. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So have um, in total uh, five tip amendments to go over, um, and this is just a quick overview page. If anyone's looking in the packet. Um, the cover page for this, uh, it starts on page 13 of the PDF um, or uh, attachment B. And so the first four amendments um, are to advance preliminary engineering from the 24 27 draft stiff to the current stiff uh, for delivery in 2023. Three of those projects are ODOT projects and one is a full county project. And um, I'll go over all these uh, in a little more detail in a, in a minute. And then the fifth amendment is to add local funds uh, with the intent to later replace um, fund with federal funds in May when the project goes to bid. And that's for the McGillcrest um, 22nd Street uh, project. City of Salem. 
Well, I'll start with the, the preliminary engineering lift projects. This first one is uh, project key number 22692. It's uh, Polk County striping and marking um, to do some pavement markers and widening the lanes on the edge uh, at five different corridors in Polk County. Uh, the reason it's coming to this group is because there's one location uh, in the SCAS boundary, which is the road. Uh, you can see that in the uh, top right there and circled in green. Um, this won't change any of the project costs. It's again just a, a balancing workflow issue and moving it to 2023 for delivery. Um, similarly, uh, this next project, 22726, is for Northwest Oregon lighting and enhanced intersection warning. Um, so, this is for some guided warning signs, some striping changes um, at a number of locations throughout Region 2 to reduce traffic incidents and increase safety. The ones that are in the SCATS area are kind of in the north, um, northern edge of the SCATS boundary uh, along Oregon 99E or Portland Road um, around the Brook Lake, uh, around the intersection with Brook Lake, and then a little bit further kind of right at the, the boundary of uh, the yeah. Um, the next one, the third one, is uh, a rumble strip yeah. project. Um, this is to complete the design to install center lines and shoulder uh, line rumble strips along a lot. Of, it's, it's actually quite a few, again, uh, quite a few different locations. Only one of them, I believe, one or two are in the SCAPS boundary. So, um, and this is again on uh, Portland Road, uh, which is 99E. It extends this portion from I-5 all the way beyond the SCAP. Another thing to note, just as part of this change, we're um, updating the name. You can see the previous name is a little bit long and complicated, and then it's, it's just being uh, shortened to Northwest Oregon Rumble Strip. So the point of that. And the last of the, of the set of four that I uh, initially talked about, is to complete design to install wrong way driving deterrence at a number of locations um, at exit ramps, uh, both uh, on I-5 as well as um, 569 in Eugene. The two intersection or the two uh, exits that are impacted in this gas boundary are the Delini Road <laughs> exit um, 248 and then the Brook Lake exit 263. And so all those that I just reviewed are we're just slipping the phase to 2023. And um, the one that's uh, a little bit different is uh, a request from the city of Salem for the project 21887 for the Gilchrist Street at 22nd Southeast. And uh, this is the realignment project. Um, and uh, the purpose is to add $4.5 million in local funds to the construction phase of the project to cover cost increases. And um, I think the, the plan is to come back in May um, when the bids go out to request additional federal funds from, from SCAPS. So this, this move right here is just to add a local. Um, and then a little bit of project background. So this is the, the realignment north south, you see 22nd um, being realigned. Um, and then the east west road there is McGillcrest. So there's a signal improvement. And then you see instead of kind of dog legging here, 20 seconds going to come together into a, a direct intersection there. And then that's the McGillcrest uh, cross section, just looking at some of the improvements that are taking place around the intersection there, including sidewalks and um, cycle tracks, and um, I think some changes to the travel lane as well. How far, how far west is that going to go? Is that going to go all the way over to Salmon Run? Not, um, not with this phase, but that with the next phase. So this is just going to go um, in the intersection and go from that. Okay. Mainly intersection and then feeding, you know, catering back into cross section, and then the next phase will end it in either direction. Priority being west, or because of the foot traffic and over there by 
mm -hmm. Social Security office and the vets. I mean, that's definitely a priority. I mean, I'm not sure exactly in terms of the scheduling of construction. Um, you know, all of this is um, included in the those other phases have funding coming through the raise grant that we received. And so um, I'm not sure sequencing right now. But yes, that's obviously a high important need. I will say that, I'm <clears throat> sorry, I just checked before this meeting to find out when bid openings are. And bid opening is anticipated to be on May 23rd, which is actually the date of your May policy committee meeting. So we may or may not have information at that meeting, more likely at the next meeting after that. Sorry, I'm not sure I didn't ask you right now. We're good. Any other questions on any of these five? I wanted to clarify the first four, the ODOT projects, is that they um, are the PE only phases. And uh, ODOT, because of the funding issue and the, not, uh, the, you know, the uncertainty of what the actual construction costs are, are not actually funding the construction phases in the TIP at this point. So there was just the PE, and then when they reached design acceptance that then they at that point would add the construction funding. So these projects have construction, they're just not programmed. So okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this will move them further along the process. Yes. So get them started sooner. Advanced, is what and a better chance of them getting funded versus other projects from the 24 7 timeline. And these are all safety projects, so there's no all question. Are, yeah. yeah. Okay, any further questions on any of these projects? Motion to approve resolutions 20-7 through 20-11. Also moved. I'll second. Moved by Lyle, seconded by Kevin to adopt resolutions 20-7 through 20-11. If anybody wants one of them pulled, we can uh, vote on these in, uh, individually. Okay, I'm not hearing a, ask for a poll, so um, we'll call for the question. Uh, all in favor of resolutions 23-7 through 23-11, say aye. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying no. Give me no objection, all pass unanimously. Fantastic. We're done. Um, Next up is item E, which is revising the list of critical urban freight corridors in SCAT. Jackson, you're up. <laughs> All right. So, in your memo and your version, sorry, I'm doing this public outreach all well. Yeah. Uh, in your Robin's Egg Glue, Robin's Egg Glue pamphlet, uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, we have a short memo on the critical urban freight corridors and what we want uh, a minor modification. So a critical urban freight corridor is defined from the division last act of the This committee uh, defined a number of cord uh, segments, corridors, not, okay. First there's the, the naming thing. So when we're saying critical urban freight corridors, we're talking about a segment of roadway and not an entire corridor. Most people, when you hear corridor, it's like cordon road, you know. We're talking about a segment of a cordon where a project is going to exist. So the purpose of critical urban freight corridors are to make segments of roadways that have a freight supportive project eligible for federal funds. And the infra, uh, Infrastructure, so infra, which is infrastructure for rebuilding America specifically. These are nat nationally competitive and they are oversubscribed. So, to date, I don't recall anybody uh, in the Scots area actually receiving any infra grants, even the or Bass Lane, which was the predecessor, even if they were was on the CRT. There are a limited number of miles within Oregon, and we have a roughly nine miles to allocate or designate within the SCATs. Um, on the screen, these are the corridors that we, the segments that we currently defined. So you realize uh, Center Street and Miguel Chris both have projects that are going uh, to construction in the next couple of years. And perhaps one of them can get infra 
um, grand forum. Maybe probably not. The others have projects that are identified in the long range plan over the long period. This is just making things eligible. It's not making, uh, it's not saying that they will become aware. The last uh, segment, of course, is the sale of river crossing. That record of the decision uh, was for the no build. So, as part of the process for updating the long range plan, we want to remove that segment and put in a different segment to make that those projects available. Uh, there are some requirements in uh, the federal regulations. So, essentially, the critical urban freight corridor needs to connect an intermodal facility to the interstate system, uh, or it needs to connect uh, a freight generating system area to a road that connects to the interstate system, or it helps move freight in within the region by on a road that is locally defined to be freight important. So we talked with the TAC this month, and we uh, there are four segments to consider. First off, and this is alphabetical, uh, no, no other reason for this ordering, uh, is Brook Lake from I-5 to River Road. Uh, we we have considered the second option from just I-5 to Huff, but the TAC suggested keeping that from the River Road. As you know, the IAMP, the Interchange Area Management Plan for the Brook Lake I-5 was adopted by OTC last month. And so these projects are eligible. Um, the, they're also in the MTB. The second project is, or segment is Hyacinth from Dr. MLK Jr. Parkway to uh, the Portland Road. Um, this is serving the north part of the Salem Industrial District. Salem has a project to widen Hyacinth to major arterial standards. The third project uh, segment is the Salem Industrial Drive from Cherry Avenue to Bill Fry. This is serving the southern portion of the Salem Industrial Area. And this is a half sweep uh, widening to collector standards that Salem plan and our plan. The third is for 32nd and Trellstead from the I-5 underpass east, uh, east to Kubler, where there's a signal at 36th. And this is a widening that road to uh, minor arterials. And this is uh, for the Fairview industrial area. Uh, the recommendation from the TAC was to um, have you guys uh, proposed endorse the removal of the entry for the Salem River Crossing and to add the Brook Lake project to the list and what process and then direct staff to send this list to ODOT because the way it works is we make recommendations to ODOT for the list since we're under 500,000, but it's usually a rubber stamp. So at that point, it's an ODOT. Because we've done such a great job. Exactly. And they agree with us all the time. Because it does such a great job. Money. And that's all. And if there are any questions. Oh, thank you very much, Ray. Because you've done a great job. We've done a great job. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, questions on the recommendation or the process? Uh, Sadie. Thank you, Chair Clark. Um, if we have, for example, the segment of Brook Lake Road from the I-5 northbound ramps to River Road added as a critical urban freight corridor and we receive federal funding, are there limitations or kind of like performance guarantees? What do we have to do? Are there any limitations to what we can do, I guess, is a better way to phrase the question, if we receive federal funding. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the, uh, this just makes it uh, eligible for the, the infra grants. So there, and they would just be another source of funding for uh, the projects. It wouldn't have any, as far as I know, it doesn't have any additional okay. uh, Okay. Aside from maybe you need to like spend it by this time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No performance measures. It doesn't have any additional federal requirements. 
it just needs to be a, a freight supportive project. And since these areas are next to freight supportive land uses, mm -hmm. they go hand in hand. Okay. I just want to make sure there wasn't like, well, we need to have this many feet of travel distance per lane. You know what I mean? Something that yeah. might kind of like limit our ability to implement what we were planning on. And then am I understanding correctly that staff just looked at the list of projects we already have and said, well, these could be good places where we could designate a critical urban freight corridor within our existing project list? Yes. Okay. Yes, and so, and the purpose of uh, doing the critical urban freight corridor is to make projects eligible for the federal funding. The okay. nice thing about this uh, designation or this process is we can change the list anytime we want. So when McGillchrist or Center Street is completed, they will come off the list and we will, you know, find other areas to make the projects eligible. There's really no, that, that's about the extent of why we go through this process from the, for the federal point of view. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. And we always want to have that like 9.3 miles or whatever it is. We want, we have, a roughly, we never want to get to zero. No, we, we, have, yeah, and we have roughly nine miles. We might, I think we actually went 12 last time. You know, and with Brook Lake, it would be 8.9. So we're just under nine. But the other thing is uh, later this year, and this is foreshadowing and kind of and not quite tangential, we will be discussing functional classification of the roads as part of the expansion of the uh, stats boundary. And we will re review the list and see if there's any additional roads or projects that make sense to bring out uh, based on what OMS will have. But since pretty sure OMS doesn't have anything great supportive in their TSP, this will probably just stay, but we might increase the number of miles. I don't know about that. That's really a discussion with ODOT. So that's foreshadowing. Sorry to get somewhat, you know. No, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? So motion to endorse removing Salem River Crossing entry from the list of critical urban freight corridors and adding the segment of Brook Lake Road from I-5 northbound ramps to River Road to the list and direct staff to provide the list to ODOT for further submittal to the Federal Highway Administration. So moved. Moved by Maria. I'll second. Seconded by Sadie. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Most signify by saying no. Hearing no objection, motion passes unanimously. All right. Uh, item F is the SCAS 2023-2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan, MTP, and Air Quality Conformity Determination. And that goes to, once again, Max. Okay. Um, so last month, we started to give you a quick overview of all the chapters and appendices of the, the plan. Uh, it's been available on the website for Back to the end of the public to do it. We've had discussion with the TAC over the last two months as well. And uh, just want to go over some of the proposed changes that will be included in the public review record the last few weeks were released today to go out to the public for a more substantial review plus additional public outreach events uh, over the next month and a half. We're culminating in a uh, public hearing at your May 23rd meeting. Also, uh, well, I'll give you an overview of the draft air quality conformity determination that is associated with the long range plan. There are just um, and there's just a few changes to the first from the first draft to the public review draft that are proposed based on some comments that were received before today. Thank you, Sadie, for your comments, but I haven't been able to. Uh, we'll, we'll address them by the time of the public hearing. Uh, and everybody on the board will see them as soon as I figure out how to get them out of Acrobat and the 
Uh, so there are just a few number of changes for the pub, uh, to go to a public review draft. There is in chapter two, there is some dates for the updating local TSPs. Uh, Salem and Kaiser's based on the uh, climate friendly area CFPC related work that they're doing. In chapter four, we updated the transit ridership to December 2022 and put in some wording on the aviation master plan and the funding of the terminal that City of Salem provided in February, I believe. Chapter five uh, will now have the corrected uh, critical urban freight corridor. I made a mistake last time, four years ago, and had both bridges on there. We're going to choose this center street, and I will swap out Salem's River Crossing for Brook Lake because that is the appropriate decision that has been made, or appropriate based on the decision that has been made. <laughs> uh, chapter seven, uh, I'm going to add in the, the long range project from ODOT on the Brook Lake I 5 as. TBD as that's been adopted by the uh, OTC, so those are eligible for funding. Chapter 8 saw the most changes as uh, during the process, I believe I mentioned that we go out to consultation with the resource agencies. They provided information that are uh, use wetlands uh, coverage data and a data on historic buildings and uh, districts. And so we, we did the analysis resulted in tables changing and maps updating. Um, and then, as I mentioned last month, mm -hmm. K is just data sources. These have been um, no longer relevant as Chapter 8 has the data sources in it. So it's just trying to make it a little bit more concise. Uh, these will be the chapters and appendices in public review. Um, they'll be posted on our website either today or tomorrow before then, that will be found before Thursday. The other document, which most of you haven't seen, and, and that's why it got included in your packet, is the air quality conformity determination. Um, as a reminder, the stats area is, uh, basically we have a limited maintenance plan under effect for carbon monoxide. Uh, it's going for another until 2029, so another seven years or six years. Uh, and during that period, every time we do a tip or a, a plan amendment or update, we have to make one of these documents. Uh, in the good old days, we do modeling, and so there was numbers to show you. In the nowadays, there are no numbers to show. It's just words, and so it's, sorry, it's very boring. Uh, as part of this, it was reviewed by the TAC. Then we had an interagency consultation with representatives from ODOT, DEQ, Environmental Protection Agency, and Federal Highway and Transit Administrations in February to discuss the projects, the document. Uh, they didn't have any comments really about the document, so the draft is unchanged since January. We did add two appendices uh, with the meeting notes. From that meet, from the interagency consultation, just to document what they said and how we responded to it. And then the list of projects, which is Appendix 4. And I noticed that it was printed, unfortunately, without the air quality um, categories on it. So in the public review draft, that will be updated to show if the project is exempt, meaning it's exempt from any sort of air quality. Uh, modeling or hotspot analysis when you go to the local jurisdictions go to uh, build it, or if it's non exempt, so it's like a road widening, building a new road, or something like that, and it needs hotspot analysis. Which so that's is, that, that blank end at the end. That would be the blank after, yeah. So okay. I'm going to basically toss out the, the you'll, yeah, you'll see air quality conformant or the your quality, quality status. status, and then you'll see is the project within our air quality boundary? Because our air quality boundary is smaller than the SCATS planning area. So the, both of those will be shown on this table when it goes out for public review. And so the TAC uh, saw this and they 
I recommended that, that the or this all well, everything I've been talking about. I recommended that the PC release the draft um, SCATS Metropolitan Transportation Plan and the ATCD for public review, public review and comment with the changes I mentioned for the critical urban freight corridor and the other things and the, and the edits to the documents. Uh, as a reminder, the public review, review period will be at the end of this month through May 12th. Uh, that will give us some time to assemble all the comments and then provide them to you for your May mailing. And then the public hearing will happen at May 20, on May 23rd, 12 o'clock, this room, unless we move for some reason. Uh, that's all I'll ask you for adoption at this point. And I believe we're at the question time. Okay. Commissioner Mordhorst. Thanks, Chair. Um, Ray, I think we asked this last year. Can you give us the descriptions of the categories that are included, oh, yeah. illustrative, and committee? Yeah. So, illustrative are those that there's no funding identified. And so they're just meant, they're illustrative there. Here, here are some needs that have been identified by local jurisdiction, but we don't know how to currently. Uh, or they're not a priority based on we have a limited amount of funds. So they're just falling off of there. But they are listed here. If funding becomes available, we need to amend the plan to bring them in, etc. Included, or I guess the easier one is committed. Committed are pretty much things My that partner. are in the tip. <laughs> so we know how that goes. And so there's supposedly money available for them unless construction costs increase and then there we there isn't money, but we're going to see that money is available in the next five years to build everything in the committed process. Not just the TIP, it might be the ODOT STIP. O o dot STIP, yeah. Or local or, funds. Yeah, right. But most of them should be in the TIP. Uh, they're regional, but there are other ones like, you know, buses or. So for the most part, money is identified, money is secured. They're going to be built in the next five years. Included are the ones from year five to year 20, where money is, there is money available and currently it's a priority to build it, but money has not been dedicated, it's not specifically been said, you know, to this project. And so included is just, here's the financial constraint. Here are the projects that at this point in time, we anticipate being built over the next 20-ish years. Right. Costs don't keep escalating astronomically. Yeah, with caveats, <laughs> uh, caveats, all the usual caveats. So those on the included list are considered financially constrained. Yeah. And yeah, so the financially constrained list is committed and included, and the illustrative okay. is just there because people want to see more all the projects that are being considered. One of the chapters is six. Or six nine, chapter six, yeah, chapter six, six is financial. Ray and Ray showed this at an early meeting, earlier meeting where we do a long analysis of the expected revenues from the federal government, from local governments, from the state, the amount of month funds coming to SCATS, and then you compare that to the estimated costs to see what what which of those projects in our long range plan we can afford. And I said earlier, the ones we can't afford are considered included, the ones we can't afford are, are needed, but less. Okay. Um, I had a couple things. Um, there's a couple of typos. I'll take the um, it's offline. Uh, I did have a question on page uh, six. Are there supposed to be some dates in the first paragraph under 40 CFR 93? Um, the sentence ending, we're made for the new horizon year of, wait for it. <laughs> There's no, there's nothing with the horizon year. Uh, the first uh, para, full paragraph it says um, page six oh. CFR is the start at the bottom. The end of the paragraph kind of stops. No, I don't try it. No, that should be years. <laughs> uh, the the uh, 2050. Okay. So there should be other uh, years. Yes. Thank you for giving that. All right, thanks. And that will also be in the TIP region, wrong uh, oh. listing as well, because they are exactly the same. Wild up. 
I noticed. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, you're only there once. All right. Yeah, we got two for there. Yep. And then I've got a question because you mentioned it um, on page seven is talking about the Salem Area Mass Transit ridership, and Sadie might have already been on this. Um, this is data up through 2021, 22 with the uh, youth ridership program and so forth. Ridership absolutely, you know, rocketed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. is that going to be included here? Um, no, because I use for this, I use the national what transit support. Uh, supplies to the national transit database for consistency over time and mm -hmm. that's always a year or so so the 22 numbers won't be released on their website until fall of this year can we make it a footnote or a reference can, or something I can, put a, I can put a footnote saying yeah uh, because it's spectacular it's so great thank you for calling it out absolutely i mean i would love to have it recognized in here yeah yeah, and Trevor's giving a thumbs up as yeah. well. We get the reports every month. Thank you. Um, you know, as from chariots, and I've been watching for those each month when it comes into my inbox, and it has been fantastic. But most importantly, is the positive we're getting from uh, community members. Mm -hmm. Parents love it. The writers, uh, the young people, they love it. Uh, and, it's just been a winner. And we do recognize that it is in the long range. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah. But, we read the AQCD, so I didn't. Other kids can dry her up. No, let's, let's <laughs> plug it in there. Okay. Let's celebrate our victories where we have them. And then there's another one on um, page eight. It's highlighted for, and this is, uh, I'm assuming this data is going to be inserted once we adopt yes. the policy. Okay. Yes. Anything highlighted is usually, it will happen. I'm making sure it doesn't change before adoption. Or once adoption happens, I go for it at the end of the year. So when it is adopted, what comments we received, and I'm pretty sure it'd be on page six, the highlighted in um, the pages where the financial constraint is discussed, that won't change, but who knows? Um, um, so until it's adopted, I'm not going to yeah. comment. Do not, do not assume. Yeah. And then there was an answer to the question from Jasmine. These are the pages that don't have page numbers. Yeah. And it said, um, the, it was one, um, and the answer was maybe, and then the end of the sentence says the EX, NEX determination was made for all of those in 20XX. I don't know what year that's supposed to be. Or maybe that we don't know. Uh, so it's, what it's saying is, and very, um, very nice, is. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, exempt and non-exempt determination for the projects in the TIP, uh, the local TIP, was made uh, last time we did a TIP, which I uh, asked Karen. 20. 20. So for those, because the projects in the current TIP haven't changed from the previous TIP, yeah. okay. all that was the discussed back in 2020. I just didn't have the date there, so when I think it's good. Yeah. And it wasn't highlighted, so I want to make sure yeah. that yeah. got taken care of. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So we need a motion to release the, I should release the hound, uh, release the SCAS 2023 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan MTP Associated Air Quality Conformity Determination AQCD for public review and comment as corrected. Absolutely. Well, Cameron second. Second by Cameron. Any further discussion? All in favor? Me just really quick. Yeah. Is this document also part of that motion? Okay, that's uh, separate. That's the tip. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We're going to do okay. that. We're going to do the same thing for the tip. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, signify by saying no. Hearing no objection, motion passes unanimously. All right, turn the page. Item G, the little one, the little AQCD. <clears throat> well, it's only 24 to 29. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Short term. Yep. All right. 
So this goes to Karen. Okay. So this is the first time you've seen the whole document for the, the tip. We've gone through uh, various things on it, and I'm excited to say that it is ready for public review. Um, first, I'm going to kind of go back and give you the history of what this what's been going on, and I'm going to have to hide something here. Let me see my screen. Uh, so, if you remember, this tip development process is takes several years. Uh, we started with trying to determine what the funding would ability would be, which was a challenge when the the infrastructure um, bill had not been approved yet. But we did have our uh, application availability started on October first of twenty twenty one. Uh, we completed the pre-applications um, and sent those to uh, submitted those. We received 27 pre-applications and then four additional fund requests. So this was a case where we were saying, okay, if you need additional funds for projects, let's look at those as well at the same time as the pre-applications. Uh, that was total $42 million. Then we discussed those pre-applications, TAC talked about them, and decided which ones would be uh, worth actually submitting full applications for, combining what's missing, uh, that whole discussion, and we received 17 full applications totaling 50 million. So you can see that the applications went down, but the dollar cost went up because we started realizing that uh, inflation was hitting. Um, we, we went through an app, uh, scoring and prioritization criteria, and we went through, um, we asked the policy committee at that point what was important and weighted things. And we, we divided the scoring and prioritization into two components. One of them included um, a technical score and one was kind of the, the non-quantitative type scoring. And the technical score, we got a group of technical people together. We went through each project and we scored each project as a group. We all sat around and we had to came up with one score for the group talking about its technical merits. And then in addition to that, each of the TAC members, the voting TAC members, get kind of the non-quantifiables and at, we averaged that score from all the TAC members. They came in and we averaged that score. Uh, we came up with a list of prioritized projects. We we were going through, we decided which ones we could fund, and we asked ODOT if they generously, they scoped the top several projects, the top uh, that the top six construction projects, we did that. And uh, we evaluated the cost estimates. Now, based on those scoping, they went back and actually recalculated some of the requests that were not scoped. So we looked at, at other projects based on the scoping. At this same time, we did some public outreach. We had a map and uh, people could comment on it. We received 100 online um, maps or uh, comments and four sets of written comments. Um, by October, we had received all that. Um, then after ODOT scoped these projects, uh, the, I'd say the uh, applicants adjusted their applications. Now, this is when fiscal reality kit place. Remember <laughs> that last year in June when we went, oh my, if we look at the cost escalations that are happening and we looked at the additional fund requests, the additional additional fund requests that came in after the scoping and Hayesville, went to bid and it came out and they had the bid opening. And we realized that we didn't have enough money to do all of these things and complete projects. And at that time we, we, we went through it and talked about it and we said, let's fund projects that are in the pipeline. Let's make sure that we're gonna continue to fund the existing programs. We're gonna fund the existing projects and the projects that were in the illustrative years, which had now come in, um, 
but we just let's not fund any new projects. Let's save those funds for making the uh, projects whole. We went through a whole bunch of them and realized that we're going to make projects a little whole. That would be our priority. So at that point, uh, you directed me to prepare the draft tip and the air quality conformity determination, the AQCD for the tip, um, which I've been doing since then, obviously. And then the air quality consultation was held on February 15th, the same time with the, as we did with the, the MTP. So we did these together. Uh, this is where we had several projects that were non-exempt from air quality. And we had to confirm that that's what was made. There was a couple of projects that we were not clear on. One of them being the um, 551 or the 5122, uh, where sure whether that was, because it really didn't have a construction phase yet, but would that be in a non-exempt project and they decided it would. So that we went through that whole process of that. Okay, so we're back. We're here. We prepared the draft tip in the AQCD. We're here today. Uh, the, TAC, the TAC recommended to release this for public review. And from here, we, um, we will go out for um, our public review period. We've been doing some already. We've been doing some outreach as it is. Uh, we're doing it's a 30 day public review period. We will have longer than 30 days, obviously. And the public uh, hearing, if we plan on scheduling that in May, then it, after that, it goes to the uh, governor for signature. And then finally, the US DOT, Federal Highway and Federal Transit approval, we need to have that by September 30th so that the due tip becomes effective on October 1st this year, 2023. And it will be the fiscal year 24. Now, I'll kind of go through the document. It's very similar to what it was the last time we adopted this. Um, it's organized in that the executive summary it includes you know, a brief summary of the entire document. Chapter one is an introduction. It describes what an MPO is and what a TIP is. It includes historical information about projects that have been programmed since 2003. And then it includes more detailed information about projects in the most recent TIP. Chapter two is consistency. And this is a bunch of federal requirements. What are our requirements to prepare the TIP? It explains how the plan is consistent with the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and other state and local plans. Uh, chapter three is a financial plan. It describes the funding sources uh, that are available, including Federal Highway Administration, Federal Transit Administration, state and local sources. And it's followed by revenue assumptions and the revenue projections by fund. The general guidelines for use of, of the transportation funding is included in a funding um, flexibility matrix. And then the last part of the chapter addresses the adequate maintenance and operations of the system. Financial control chapter seven. So this is just kind of our, our assumptions that we uh, are using to develop the plan. Chapter four is uh, performance-based planning. Uh, that, that was sort of augmented this time. It introduces performance-based planning and the federal performance measures and the associated targets. Describes how the projects in the TIP will help achieve those performance targets. And so we link those investments priorities to those targets, making sure that what we actually build is uh, will help us to meet our performance measure targets. Uh, chapter five is describes the whole thing that I just talked to you about, the TIP development process. What process did we need to go through to collect projects, to solicit projects, and how uh, how we determine which projects to fund. Um, there's a lot of application information that is in our appendices. Um, and then we get to chapter six, which is kind of the meat of the project, of uh, the entire TIP. This is a listing of the proposed TIP projects. And I've 
put in here the brochure so that you can actually see what those can't hear Lori anymore. Yeah, I've lost sound. I lost sound too. start sharing my screen again too. Yes, All right, we're back again. And the pause for station identification. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. And we're back. Well, hopefully <laughs> we didn't lose too much. Start the beginning. Yeah, because we actually <laughs> put this on the uh, uh, our, our our website. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Where we are? We're in chapter seven. Um, so demonstrating fiscal constraint. Uh, and it it shows that uh, we there are adequate and reasonably available funds for the transportation projects that are included in the tip. And then the transit statement of financial capacity is also included in this chapter. Uh, chapter eight is our tip management process. Uh, this is something that we talked about last fall, the tip modification procedures, what is an amendment, what is a full amendment, what requires public review. And it, we updated it in um, this year to match what ODOT has so that we're more aligned with uh, ODOT and Federal Highway. So then we have chapter nine, which is the analysis of the projects and this Chapter contains the environmental justice analysis. Kim did go into detail previously about what is involved in this environmental justice analysis. Um, it also included the process that we used for the consultation. As we, we have to consult with uh, the environmental agencies as well as the tribes, and it described that. And this is also where the uh, air AQCD is. And since Ray went through the AQCD, I'm not going to. And if he, we made changes to that one, we will make changes to this one. It, well, you didn't make them to mine yet. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, that is there. Um, and then chapter 10 is our public outreach and participation. Uh, so far, what's in there is just what we've done up, up uh, through the first of the year. Uh, we will, again, this will be updated to reflect any of the uh, outreach activities that uh, we're doing after any comments we receive and what changes were made due to those comments. Uh, chapter 11, obviously, these are the resolutions adopting the TIP and the AQCD will be included after we do that. <laughs> so we'll they more up there. Yeah, they're, they're not they're not there. Um, and then we do have the appendices that has uh, all background information for the actual document itself. So we will be going if you release it for public review, we'll be going out for a um, moment and to let the public know about it. Uh, it's really kind of more fun to do it with projects that actually have funding. Than projects that could have funding. So, <laughs> but because there aren't really any new projects, it's kind of sad, but there are some o new ODOT projects and new transit projects are in. Okay, uh, we do have a lovely website that is uh, Kim has done. It's a little portal, and we'll be doing several things using this as our kind of a opportunity where people can go to make comment. We will have an in-person open house uh, in April. 
and we will have the online open house. We've discovered the online open house is probably a hundred times more effective than an in-person open house. Um, and to put some little videos in there and the public hearing again um, in May. So our today as action we request today is suggest any changes before going out for public review. Uh, to release the yes. tip and the AQCD for public review and to schedule a public hearing for May 23rd. Any questions? I got one other question or suggestion. Um, it was asked to me how much money is going towards transit, pedestrian, bicycle, infrastructure for automotive. Is there a breakdown of these? In the not in this this table, no, but in the TIP document itself, there is a big breakdown of how much we've spent in the last 20 years by category. It, it includes uh, transit, uh, it includes planning, it includes bike ped, it includes bridges, and it's broke down that way. Yeah. And, and this, it's like $140 million in the tip, this year's TIP. But a lot of it's because of Center Street Bridge. <laughs> so, is it, but that breakdown is only of our. It's only of our of SCAT of funds. SCAT's and SDH yeah. funds. Yeah, yeah. We would say ODOT's funds. It does. Sure. Yeah, that break. Do, I don't have the breakdown, but with including ODOT projects, but well, I do I have it by in this proposal right here. Yeah. ODOT, well, like if we had that, then if people go and look at it and I get questions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Fantastic. Um, Sadie. Thank you, Chair Clark. Uh, were these projects um, prioritized by the CAP or by the TAC, excuse me, using the prioritization scores and weighting that we agreed to before this meeting? I'm not going to say the month because I can't remember what month that would be. It was last year. It, it was yeah, last, last year. year. Uh, so the projects were prioritized using that scoring criteria, but when it came to funding them, we funded none of them. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we um, went through that process with the expectation that if money became available, we would go back to that list, that prioritized list. We wouldn't necessarily start from scratch. Someday that money will become available. Well, but that's the hope. Not in the near future. For sure. Yeah. And I apologize. I have to um, jump over to another meeting in a minute. So if you watch me disappear, that's why. Well, sorry, we all disappeared a minute ago. So. <laughs> all right. Um, any other questions? So a motion out there to uh, move that we release the draft fiscal federal fiscal year 2024-2029 tip for public review and comment. So moved. So moved. Okay. Neither one. Moved by Sadie. Oh, sorry. Seconded by Cameron, uh, Kevin Cameron. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying no. Okay, no objection. Motion passes unanimously. And we will be doing the, the tip and the MTP simultaneously with all of our stuff. And so, same time frames of all of that. Okay. Which will be yeah. just the um sometimes people get confused. I know I do between uh, one and the other, so we're gonna have to really do something to differentiate. Especially now that we're using MTP and MTP IP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean it, it's easy to add the long range plan is the MTP, the short range for your yeah. The program is the tip. That would be helpful to put a narrative title like that. Yeah, I see Sadie, you know. Yeah, say. but also like I have trouble reviewing the MTP and I think, you know, to some extent the tip documents as well, understanding how it all works together and what relates like how does the, you know, the air quality conformity 
air quality conformity determination fit into the plan and where and is it federally required? It would just, if I could, I almost need a whiteboard. You know what I mean? Or like a flow chart to figure out how everything relates. So actually in the tip, in one of the first chapters, there is a little flow chart that shows you that. Yay. Now, I did not print the 186 pages for you. I Why? gave you a link to it. Thank you. <laughs> so I can't just point it out. <laughs> no, I'll go, I'll go look for that. I'm sure it's helpful. There, there is one of how the plans all fit together. But it does not have how the AQCD plan is in there. Is I mean, that that's maybe um, an example that can be somewhat aside, but all of the different, yeah. because I was reading through and offering comments on the, the MTP, you know, one of our many C's is a consistency. And as I was kind of like going back and forth between our selection criteria that we have determined and some of the plans that we're relying on, it doesn't seem like there is 100% alignment between all of those, but knowing what is supposed to align and what maybe falls outside, um, especially when it comes to like state level guidance documents, that was one thing reading the the air quality conformity i was like i i don't know what in the in in the in the like the mental model and suite of documents that i'm carrying around that odot has put out for different purposes we're conforming to or we're not you know anyway i i'm sure maybe others could benefit yeah <laughs> and and, and it Anybody wants to, you know, have a little work session for all this? Uh, I know Maria is interested in it, so you know, just send me an email, and we can organize a time, either one on one or little groups, to discuss the long range plan, the tip, what an AQCD really is, and where it fits into this. Spoiler: It's federally required, um, and and all that. And you know, we're, we're just shoot me an email, and anybody who wants to, we can set up a time and talk about this for as long as you want or short or over multiple days to allow you to chew on it and think about stuff. Thank you, Ray. I really appreciate that offer um, to make sure that we're uh, as up to speed as we possibly can be with this complex process. All right. Um, with that, you're going to release that and we are going to go to our Oregon Travel Study Overview and it's still the Rage Action Show. Okay. This is another pink the pink short memo. So this is basically just informational because starting April 3rd, so next Monday, I guess, uh, flyers will go out or postcards or envelopes will go out to a number of households in around the state, including Salem Kaiser, to ask them if they'd like to participate in a household study, a travel study. And the last time we did one was back in 2009, 10. And we got some good information on it, and it was used to build models. And you know, but a lot has happened since 2009, right? Uh, we work remotely. We buy things differently. Transit is increased service onto Saturdays and Sundays. There's been a right? There's just been a lot of things happening, and, and so it's time to go out and ask people. How, you, how has everything changed in how you travel, who you travel, who you travel where you're going, et cetera. So this is a, a study that's spearheaded uh, with ODOT and all the other MPOs in Oregon and the Vancouver, Washington MPO. We'll be reaching out and collecting data from about 3,000 households in this spring period, so April through probably early June or late May. Basically, while people are still in school, but not at school. Right. And then the consultants will take all that and chew on it and see what sort of, they're also testing recruitment because everybody ignores phone calls. They don't, they throw away their mail. You know, how are we going to get people involved and uh, in the study? And so they have a couple different ways. And so they're going to try it. And then this fall, through next spring, we'll be reaching out to a larger audience. So that will be 20,000 households statewide. I don't know the total number of um, pieces of mail that will go out, but it will be 
at least 10 times that. So 200,000, maybe half a million flyer households will be contacted just to get 20,000 to participate because response rates are about 2% if you're lucky. We've been trained by so many robocalls to ignore. Right. It is really, really hard to break through that anymore. And, and mailers are the same. And part of the reason that we want to, you know, this is a good time because there's no presidential election card. So we want to stay away from all that. Um, so that's basically what this memo is. Just letting you know. So if somebody contacts you, you can say, yes, this is an actual thing. And if they want more information, there's a website. I've updated our website to have a little blurb on it. Uh, ODOT will have a website that has a bigger blurb. The consultants have a website. So we just try to let people know that this is happening. And in the fall, next year, once we get some data, I'll come back and say, here's some results. Are you going to be on Instagram? Sorry? Instagram? Put the flyer on that. I don't know. Uh, I think, no, I think I, the, the first period is just mailing out. Um, but they are, and when we get to the fall and spring, there are additional ways that we're trying to recruit people that usually are not, don't participate. So, lists from transits, talking to community uh, based organizations, various things like that. There will also be outreach with, you know, maybe there'll be ads on, well, not TikTok, because we're not allowed to use it, Instagram, not Facebook, <laughs> et cetera. So, All right. so of, yeah. of some form, yes. Yeah. Good plan. All right, any other questions? Okay, looking forward to that. Um, tip modifications, who has included in this, Name that color, butterscotch attachment. We a game with uh, uh, Mike's predecessor. We'd have a, a game of name that color. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard, Richard Schmidt. All right. Save money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that could be have a lighter honey, not, not the blackberry honey. <laughs> so we've got. Yeah. Yes, so this um, is an information item only. Um, it's a review of um, modifications that have been made since January or since February 2023. Um, the first four on here were administrative amendments. Um, so those did not come before the board, but the last two will look familiar. Um, those are both the congressionally designated pro uh, spending projects for um, chariots, um, for the one for the South Salem transit facility and the other for electric bus purchases. So um, we just include this as information purposes so you see what, what's been um, edited in this in this dip after the fact. I've got a question. Uh, this is on the Salem project is one that we've watched for quite some time that's Orchard Heights. So it's looking right away to 24 on that one. That's the um, Sidewalk project, isn't it? Okay. Yep. So, how is that rolling out? South side of Forty Heights. Yeah. Near the near the park, and I think one other location around the Upton Group. Near the water reservoir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. Housing Authority property, and then there's a median crossing. Exactly. Okay. So but that one is still progressing. Yeah, I think it just, we realized this is the one you might remember we had to add a right of way phase. There are some that need to be at some corners. Okay. And so, and this is, this was one that when we added the right of way in 23, it should have been 24. Okay. And, and so it, it had to, um, they had got, we were trying to get it corrected before it got approved, but it got approved the day before we got corrected. So we had to go through another amendment just to fix that error. Okay. So it was really correcting an error. Well, I know a lot of us are figuring that out. We're, we're, we're bird dogging this one. 
because this has been so important for the West Salem area for so long. So when I see that, I'm like, is it okay? Is it okay? <laughs> I have to. All right. Any other questions on the TIP amendments? Notifications, my bad. All right, let's go to item which is OMPOC. So you were given a uh, updated version of kind of where the conversation with OMPOC went earlier this week. So Mike and I were on that uh, Zoom call and talk through these. Yeah, so Aaron is showing. Um, so what you see on the screen is um, same table that went out in the packet, but I added a column that says whether the uh, what the on pop consensus was for each of those bills. So as you recall, last month we, we went through these bills. We, we gauged the uh, consensus among the stats members about whether they supported or did not support or whether they want to track that, you know. Um, and then Kathy attended the OMPOC meeting uh, on March 20th, and then all the MPOs discussed the bills, and the objective was to come up with a consensus agreement on bills. So if someone had a problem with the bill, um, it was uh, turned into a non-support. So uh, in summary, um, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, Three of the bills were supported, and I'll go through these, supported by OMPOC, and I'll go through these really quickly. Uh, the fund exchange for local governments, HB 2101, supported by OMPOC, by consensus. Um, the ODOT funding plan for highway maintenance when lane miles are added. No one really liked that, so it's not support. Uh, the, uh, the bill authorized cities to elect to operate photo radar. That was supported by OMPOC uh, pretty unanimously. Uh, and, that, and that inclusion of, of um, local speed limit, limit setting was supported, although it's not quite part of the bill. Um, the one on money to go for the Great Streets Program, HB 3113, um, we supported it as, as SCATS and it was supported by OMPOC as well. Uh, tolling, we didn't take a position, and OMPOC really didn't take a position on that either. The OTC membership changes, we as a, a SCATS supported those changes, but not everyone at OMPOC did. So as a group, we're doing non support for that one. Um, we want to be part of a conversation about what does that look like? You know, I, I think that wasn't a heck no, but I think it was let's talk about what this could mean for us in terms of opportunity for representation and um, being able to get maybe somebody from here on the OTC for once. I know, I can dream. <laughs> uh, and then, okay, well, good, thank you, on the next slide. And then the, um, the three related bills have to do with electric uh, electricity for electric vehicles and different approaches. Um, here at um, here at Stats, we supported on the three a, a feasibility study. Um, and on, OMPOC didn't uh, support any one of the three specifically, but they did support a general need to study the revenues regarding EVs. So I think everyone says EVs are coming. We have to figure out how we do it, but no one was really all that excited about one bill over the other. So, and then finally the. Um, uh, joint resolution two to amend the constitution to change the use of gas taxes yeah. um, so they can be used for reducing traffic from pollution. Um, we did not support it here at SCATS and it did not support that um, either. Not even close. That one, that one also went down real fast. Okay. Oh, we've got excess money for maintenance. Oh, we don't. So, based on the ones that we did support as a group, um, a letter will be drafted from OMPOC, and I think we'll have the logos or the names of our MPOs so that that letter could be used if someone wants to submit testimony. Of course, anyone, any individual MPO or legislator or citizen can go ahead and, and um, testify in support, but we could send a support letter based on OMPOC for those specific bills. 
And as we are lobbying, um, you know, our legislative delegation, we can throw in, it's not, not just me, but, you know, this is well understood on a statewide basis. So it's, it's one of those flags that legislators are looking for, whether they want to pitch on to legislation or go, mm, I'm not so sure. It gives them some confidence that this has been vetted on a wider scale. So once I get that letter, I will definitely share it with all the um, stats PC members so they could use it as, as needed. I, I want to say that it was a really good conversation. Uh, we were able to dive into the issues, the pluses and minuses in a really collaborative and substantive way. So I was quite gratified to be part of that process um, and just feel like this is collaborative. <clears throat> Is there any questions? Anyone on online? Okay. Okay, fantastic. Looking forward to that letter coming out. Um, are there under business? The um, oh, the um, MTSAP, the Safety Action Plan. Yeah, well, I can't wait to tell you about this. So, <laughs> a lot of work's been happening the last month um, with our help from the City of Salem and. Transit, they helped us uh, develop some videos. Mm -hmm. So, so um, from Salem, Mayor Hoy, Councillor Stapleton, and Phillips, and um, uh, Gonzalez did, did videos for us. Uh, Gonzalez did one in English and one in Spanish. So, those videos were posted on our Facebook account and um, the Cog's Facebook account. And I'm doing everything I can to get it shared out to other Facebook um, uh, groups or members um, so that the word is out about the survey all of them basically say the same thing you know uh, we're doing the survey we want people the public to participate here's the website there's a 25 dollar drawing or 10 a drawing for 10 25 dollar gift certificates as a little incentive um, i don't have the current numbers but as as of as of about a week ago we had over 500 people um, not just entering the answers to the survey but telling us their stories entering locations on the map. Um, so we've been doing a lot of stuff on Facebook, but we also had stories in the um, newspapers, the West Side News and the States and the Kaiser Times. I'm trying to get the Statesman Journal to do one this week. I'm crossing my fingers, it might come out any day now. Um, I did a radio spot last week on uh, KMUZ. Uh, we've had posts, some of those posts that we did or those videos we did were posted on Twitter. Um, we sent e uh, emails out to our groups, um, and uh, of course we did the postcards at the very beginning. We did 30,000 postcards, um, so I think that covers most of our outreach. Quite an extensive outreach for this, this survey to start with. So, um, and we've had two of our focus group meetings, and we have one more scheduled for next week. So. Um, then we have our steering committee. I, last Friday, I sent out a doodle poll for trying to select a, a meeting date for our first um, meeting. Um, we've had, I think, five of our members have responded, so I will email them asking to um, respond or up, respond to the doodle poll. And we'll have our first steering committee meeting. Um, maybe we'll review some of the crash data, some of the initial results from the household the online survey. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Any questions on that? And then uh, we all should have those links we can share out on our social media as well. Fantastic. Um, our next policy committee meeting will be on April 25th. Um, same bat time, same bat station. And well, I, I forgot to mention, can I personally thank uh, Councillor Phillips and uh, Director Director Pinoas Bressi for taking time out of their schedule to do some videos for us. So thank you again. It was easy with the script provided. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, um, the next meeting will be during uh, the uh, League of Oregon Cities uh, Spring Conference. So I'm gonna try to get in if I can't, if I have some connectivity issues, Lyle, you're gonna be up. Uh, That's on uh, April 25th. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hopefully, I'll have a good connection and I'll still be able to be online. Um, and then the status of the planning projects. So it's good to keep track of all of these things as we talked about um, a little early on. 
Um, there's so many studies going on right now. We want to make sure we keep them straight so we can show them to people. That is all I have. Is there anything else for the good of the order or any, oh, by the ways? Um, well, Karen is Karen Odenfeld still I'm with still us? Here. You didn't know. No, no, but I'm she's not. going on, uh, you know, she's on a limited basis right now and she's going on vacation. She'll be back next month, right? Yeah. Well, oh. The last vacation. <laughs> no, actually, it's my first. Oh, first, first, first of retired <laughs> vacation. And we do have a we do have an MWAC meeting coming up on April sixth that I'm working on the agenda. Hope to get that to you, uh, maybe end of today. Okay, sounds good. All right, Mr. Uh, sure. So yeah, one thing off the record, uh, this is May or April. We're month still that, we're still on the record. On the record, okay. Right. So. Um, not to do with transportation. So the month of April is the child and child week month. So with this month, we coordinate with family building blocks. And at Lunch Bob has a diaper drive that will be going the whole month of April. And this is provide diapers for children whose parents are choosing between food and diapers. Food wins. So some of these children will literally leave family building blocks at noon one day until the next morning wearing the same diaper they left with the day before. So it's a great cause. Those kids don't get any voice in what how their lives are felt to them. So it's a great opportunity to make a change in a child's life. So month of April. So you just buy diapers and drop them off in English Schwab. There's diapers English Schwab. There's posters all over town, um, all over the actually the middle of the valley. And there's schools, businesses signed on. So um, a few banks. So you can go in any one, you'll see the poster, you can buy a pack of diapers right there and throw them in the bin. Nice. Or you can buy some and just drop them off. And do they have a link like uh, Amazon and be able to just have them delivered? I don't know if they do or not. I'm going to look for that. Probably yeah. Really smart thing to do. Um, you know, I wait does that, where you can just click on the link, uh, the um, red cart project. So you can go on there and link on that and it gets delivered. And um, it's very, very efficient. And for people on the go, it's uh, people love that. So thank you for reminding us of that and how we can make a difference in a child's life. All right. With that, Great reminder. It is 123 and we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Austin.